Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, December 1st, 2023. Federal budgeting after the fair tax is enacted. What a difference. Throughout history, different groups have tried to maintain their authority and protect their livelihoods by convincing everyone else that some subject or problem is just too complicated for average people to understand. And all too often, the ones trying to maintain their positions of power and authority are government bureaucrats. Now, we all know that the people in D.C. believe that the rules that apply to us in flyover country, and that's anywhere 50 miles outside of D.C., that those rules don't apply to them. A glaring example of this is the willingness of the D.C. crowd to put our country's future at risk by recklessly disregarding a basic principle of sound money management. You don't spend more than you make. Now, unlike the powers in D.C., the rest of us must carefully budget and ensure that we don't spend more than we have. Penn Horton, a group of economists at the University of Pennsylvania, published their latest budget model. Here are some of the points made in that report. The U.S. public debt outstanding of $33.2 trillion, often cited by the media, is largely misleading as it includes $6.8 trillion that the federal government owes to itself due to trust fund and other accounting. The economics profession has long focused on debt held by the public, currently equal to about 98% of GDP at $26.3 trillion for assessing its effects on the economy. We estimate that the U.S. debt held by the public cannot exceed about 200% of GDP, even under today's generally favorable market conditions. Larger ratios in countries like Japan, for example, are not relevant to the United States because Japan has a much larger household savings rate, which more than absorbs the larger government debt. Under current policy, the United States has about 20 years for corrective action after which no amount of future tax increases or spending cuts could avoid the government defaulting on its debt, whether explicitly or implicitly, i.e. debt monetization producing significant inflation. Unlike technical defaults where payments are merely delayed, this default would be much larger and would reverberate across the U.S. and world economies. The time frame is the best case scenario for the United States under market conditions where participants believe that corrective fiscal actions will happen ahead of time. If instead they started to believe otherwise, debt dynamics would make this time window for corrective action even shorter. Now this information is readily available to the people in D.C. and there's no doubt that they can read it and understand it. They know that our massive deficit spending and burgeoning debt are unsustainable and that restoring fiscal sanity to the federal budget will require that many government programs be cut. Now, this will no doubt cause the people who rely on and benefit from those programs to complain and protest in earnest. So in order to avoid this massive backlash, the D.C. crowd is counting on the process being so complicated and the numbers so large that our eyes will glaze over if we try to think about it and we'll just give up and let the smart people in D.C. handle it. This is one of the main reasons that D.C. opposes the fair tax. When the fair tax is enacted, the whole budget process becomes much simpler. We can easily see the impact on the fair tax rate by each category in the budget. The fair tax gives us a say in the federal budget. An article published by the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities states the following. In fiscal year 2023, the federal government is estimated to spend $6.3 trillion, amounting to 24.2% of the nation's gross domestic product. Of that $6.3 trillion, over $4.8 trillion is estimated to be financed by federal revenues, and $1.5 trillion will be financed by net borrowing. Now, in reality, the income payroll tax system only collected $4.4 trillion, not the $4.8 trillion as predicted when this study was written in fiscal year 2023. Now, since D.C. still spent the $6.3 trillion, they had to borrow not $1.5 trillion, but $1.9 trillion. 
Now, since the fair tax rate is calculated each year to collect the same amount of money as the income tax, the rate of 23% inclusive would have collected $4.4 trillion in fiscal 2023. This would mean that of every dollar you spent on new retail goods and services, 23 cents would go to pay the fair tax, 77 cents for the product. Now, products purchased in Europe or other countries with a value added tax include the amount of the VAT in the price you pay. Now the math is easy. Each 1% of the fair tax rate collects $191.3 billion in federal taxes. Therefore, a 23% rate would collect $4.4 trillion. If we needed to collect an additional $1.9 trillion to balance the budget, the fair tax rate would have to be raised by 10% to 33%. Now this isn't complicated. It's simple math that anyone can do with a smartphone or a simple calculator. Now, data from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities shows what percentage of the total budget each major category in the budget consumes. As an example, interest on the debt is 10% of the total $6.3 trillion budget, or $630 billion. Now, if you divide that $630 billion by $191.3 billion, you get 3.29. So, in order to raise the money needed to pay the interest on the debt, the fair tax rate would have to be increased by 3.29%. Now, if we didn't have to pay interest on the federal debt, the fair tax rate could be reduced by that 3.29% to 19.7%. In that case, the fair tax would collect $3.67 trillion. Now, of course, if you did that, you'd still need to borrow the $1.9 trillion like we did in 2023 to cover the remaining $5.57 trillion budget. Now, since we can't eliminate our obligation to pay interest while we still have a federal debt, we can look at other reductions in the budget. Now, many have called for the elimination of the Department of Education, which is 4% of the $6.3 trillion budget, or $2.52 billion. Doing simple math, 2.52 billion divided by 191.3 billion is 1.3. This means that if the Department of Education were eliminated, the fair tax rate could be reduced by 1.3% from 23% to 21.7%. Then, if you continue to borrow $1.9 trillion, you can pay for all the budgeted items. The important point is that with the fair tax, the effect of federal spending on each of us is not hidden from us. It's plainly visible for everyone to see. Now, of course, if we're going to do the responsible thing, we would continue to make cuts in the $6.3 trillion budget over several years until we eliminated the deficit completely and were no longer spending more than we brought in with a fair tax. Now, once we balance the federal budget, we can increase the fair tax rate and force D.C. to use the increased revenue to start paying down the massive national debt. Now, the choice is easy. Do we want a system for funding the federal government that is so simple that everyone can understand it, that shows us the cost of the federal government on every retail receipt so everybody can understand what we're paying? that helps U.S. companies compete with foreign competitors, that keeps jobs in the United States rather than exporting them to other countries, that permanently establishes the solvency of Social Security and Medicare, and that is the largest transfer of power from D.C. to the people since the Constitution was adopted. Now, D.C. is ignoring the one real solution that allows us to remain citizens and not subjects, the fair tax. The fair tax is simple, it's non-invasive, but most of all, it works. So the solution to our economic issues is to pass the fair tax. Now, if you don't like the idea of the IRS and D.C. requiring you to reveal more and more of your private financial data and changing us from citizens to subjects, you should be helping us pass the fair tax. Under the fair tax, there are no more tax returns. You no longer have to disclose your personal financial information to the government. Banks and other financial institutions will no longer have to tell the government about the dividends and interest you received or about how much you made trading stocks, bonds, and other capital assets. With a fair tax, there's no need for the government to know anything about your IRA because you won't need an IRA. The fair tax lets everyone save for their retirement tax-free. And, of course, if the government doesn't have your confidential financial data, they can't leak it. 
So in addition to solving the confidentiality problem, the fair tax lets business owners concentrate on making their businesses more profitable and beneficial both for their shareholders and their employees. President Biden and Congress passed the fair tax, do the right thing for the people of America, and fix the broken income payroll tax system. You can go down in history as the ones who freed all present and future Americans from the tyranny of the income payroll tax system. You can ensure that there can be no more leaks of our confidential information and transfer power back to the American people over how much tax we pay. The fair tax transfers powers from Congress and the bureaucrats to the people. We, not D.C., will decide how much federal tax we pay. With a fair tax, there is no IRS. The states collect the fair tax. Now, only retail businesses will have to collect the fair tax and remit it to the government. And since less than 10% of the retailers account for 90% of retail purchases, there will be much less opportunity for evasion. Now, why would D.C. pass the fair tax and give up this almost unlimited source of donations? <laughs> they won't, at least not voluntarily. The only way they will is if the rest of us demand it. Isn't it time to end this ludicrous tax collection system and the IRS along with it? Now, there's going to be a vote on the fair tax in the House of Representatives. We now have the opportunity to force all members of the House to show where they stand. They can vote for the president income payroll tax system, or they can vote for the fair tax. They can support the corrupt income tax in the IRS, or they can vote to eliminate it. It can't be any simpler than that. They can hide the true cost of their government, or they can pass the fair tax and show everyone the true cost of government on every retail receipt. And finally, they can support the largest transfer of power from the government to the people, the fair tax, or they can vote against it. Now, if members think the fair tax needs to be amended to address a problem, they can propose the change. Don't let them get away with rejecting the entire bill because it has a perceived flaw that can be easily addressed. Please stand with us and demand that your representatives support a much fairer, much simpler, and much more efficient way to fund the government, the fair tax. The fair tax doesn't pick winners and losers. Because it taxes spending, not earnings, the fair tax lets everyone save for their retirement tax-free. The fair tax will allow us to take back control. The income payroll tax system is broken. It's no longer working. We can't repair it, but we can replace it with the fair tax. Join us and take back control of our country and our lives, not with bullets, but with the elimination of one of the biggest threats to our liberty and economic prosperity, the income payroll tax. We should all remember Edmund Burke's warning that applies to our efforts to take back control. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. We should also remember this quote from George Orwell's 1984, which, if we do nothing, may foretell your and your children's future. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. So what can each of us do? We can write letters and make calls to our elected representatives and attend Zoom town hall meetings demanding that if they really want to allow Americans to take back control, the first step is to eliminate the income payroll tax system and pass the fair tax. Take back control. Help us pass the fair tax. Help us bring about real tax reform and stop future IRS abuses. By contributing, or actually investing, $10.40 a month, you help provide a financial base to Americans for fair taxation. Now, if you can make larger contributions slash investments, these will be used not for salaries, as we're all volunteers, but for the needed updates to our economic studies, which will be vital for all future years. Please go to fairtax.org and invest in AFFT. It's an investment in your and your family's future. <laughs> This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org 